On the 6th of May of last year, I had journeyed, perhaps for the 20th time, to the distant river station and recommenced the weary routine of another launch with very moderate expectation indeed. And when on that, to me, memorable afternoon the signal was given and the aerodrome sprang into the air, I watched it from the shore with hardly a hope that the long series of accidents had come to a close. And yet it had, and for the first time the aerodrome swept continuously through the air like a living thing. And as second after second passed on the face of the stopwatch until a minute had gone by, and it still flew on, and as I heard the cheering of the few spectators, I felt that something had been accomplished at last, for never in any part of the world, or in any period, had any machine of man's construction sustained itself in the air, or for even half of this brief time. Still the aerodrome went on in a rising course until, at the end of a minute and a half, for which time it only was provided with fuel and water, it had accomplished a little over half a mile, and now it settled, rather than fell into the river, with a gentle descent. It was immediately taken out and flown again with equal success, nor was there anything to indicate that it might not have flown indefinitely, except for the limit put upon it. We may live to see airships a common sight, but habit has not dulled the edge of wonder, and I wish that the reader could have witnessed the actual spectacle. It looked like a miracle, said one who saw it, and the photograph, though taken from the original, conveys but imperfectly the impression given by the flight itself. And now it may be asked, what has been done? This has been done. A flying machine, so long a type for ridicule, has really flown. It has demonstrated its practicability in the only satisfactory way, by actually flying, and by doing this again and again under conditions which leave no doubt. I have brought to a close the portion of the work which seemed to be specially mine, the demonstration of the practicality of mechanical flight. And for the next stage, which is the commercial and practical development of the idea, it is probable that the world may look to others. The world indeed will be supine if it does not realize that a new possibility has come to it and that the great universal highway overhead is now soon to be opened. <laughs>